Hi guys, my name is Valerie and I'm a real Prague guide. And today I'm going to show you 30 things you can do in Prague's new town. First thing you can do, you can visit the nuclear bunker here in the hotel Yalta on the Wenceslas Square. And somewhere in this rose bush, there's an exit from that bunker, but I guess I won't find it now. Number one thing I recommend to do is to visit Hotel Yalta. You might be thinking, why would she tell us to visit the hotel from the time of communism? Well, that's because the receptionist here does not only have keys from the hotel rooms, but also from a nuclear bunker that is located right below the hotel. The secret exit from the bunker is supposedly in the bushes somewhere. Right around the corner you can find Lutzerna, a palace which I have already mentioned in our 20 most beautiful places in Prague video, with a strange upside down horse statue, classy coffee place, music bar where you can dance till you drop, or a movie theater, one of the oldest ones in Prague. Visiting the new town and not talking about the National Museum would be a tour guide crime. So here I go. The National Museum. Exteriors and interiors are boasting with decorations from the time of the Czech National Revival, and the exhibitions inside are great. Just across the road you can find the building of the Federal Assembly. If you like brutalism, it is one of your must-sees, but let's be honest, this kind of architecture is not to everyone's liking. And then we have the infamous main train station and the park around it, which is full of certain cheerful individuals that are ready to chat and rob you while they are at it. The historical building of the main train station is stunning, but we couldn't film the interiors much. Apparently filming there is against the rules, and doing drugs on the park bench isn't. Strange world. Whew, I think we've survived it, but let's go to our next stop. Oh, by the way, guys, do you remember this one, the Cubist kiosk? If you don't, check out our video about the worst attractions in Prague. But you know what? Not all train stations are bad. Masaryk station is the oldest one in Prague and is quite pretty. They also recently installed this clock that also shows you the weather. Cool, right? Okay guys, let's leave train stations and highways behind and go to our next part of the new town. Check out this palace Arha in Rondo Cubist style of architecture. It has some very unusual sculptural artwork as well. Cafe Imperial. If you are a foodie, it is a must. After food like that, you will want to have a nice walk around the city, and the perfect area for that is just around the corner. Petrska Čtvrt. Even though today it is full of modern architecture, its history is almost as old as the old town itself. The Church of St. Peter is where Antonin Dvořák had his wedding. them so dirty with these portraits. Look at that. It's like they're like this. Petrska Čtvrt has a lot of restaurants, and they also have a great vegetarian place. It's run by Hare Krishnas. Food here is super cheap, only 5 euro for the whole menu, and the place is really cozy and friendly.
Do you want to do some basic shopping in Prague? Well, right at the edge of the old town is Palladium. Former military barracks changed into a shopping mall. And guys, if you don't need any of the materialistic things, let me show you something else. We have this church next to the shopping mall. The church of St. Joseph next to Palladium has a little hidden gem. It is a statue of Jude the Apostle, and it is believed to bring back what was once lost. That's why people leave their wishes here. Let's take Napchikopia Street that goes around the old town to get to our next stop. Now we are in front of one of the largest churches in Prague, the Church of Our Lady of the Snow. And it's time to sit down and talk about the history of the new town. New town is called new town, but it's not actually new. It was founded in 1348 by King Charles IV, this guy again. Back then, he made Prague the seat of the Holy Roman Emperor, and he needed a much bigger city to accommodate all the people who started to move in here. So originally, New Town was actually built for poor people. The rich could stay in the old town, but the people of the lower classes, poorer professions had to move out and build new houses here. Even the smelly markets, for example, the horse market, nowadays Wenceslas Square, and the cattle market, nowadays Charles Square, were also established there in the new town. Right next to the Church of Our Lady of Snows is a beautiful Francescan garden with a playground and a coffee place. And another Rondo Cubist building, Palace Adria. Did you know that there is more than one astronomical clock in Prague? It's actually inside here. Let me show you. Ta-da! It's so complicated, my head is spinning. I wonder how Franz Kafka would react if he would see what they do to his body parts nowadays. I think it's time to get away for a little bit from the rush of the busy Newtown streets and go to the riverbank. There you can admire the Neo-Renaissance National Theatre. You can also relax on Joffin Island and rent a pedal boat. From the island, you can already see one of the most iconic structures of the new town, the dancing house. Right now, we are in front of one of the most iconic monuments of the Prague's new town. It's called Dancing House. It's supposed to represent a couple dancing. The glass part is a girl, the stone part is a guy. 
It's kind of sexist. Anyway, it was inspired by a photograph of Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. And our pro tip, guys, is actually to go on top of Fred Astaire. <laughs> because uh, on top of the dancing house, there is a rooftop bar from where you can see beautiful Prague Castle and Voltava River. Take a look. We don't recommend taking photos of the dancing house from this patch of grass because that's where very strange characters hang out and where people walk their dogs. Keep walking from the dancing house uphill and you can stumble upon this unusual church. Unusual because today it is a museum dedicated to the heroes who were killed by the Butcher of Prague and all the victims of the Heidrich Terror. Which, by the way, we also made a short video about. You are now entering the art corner of the new town. This is one of our most favorite coffee places here. A bit hidden, hopefully you will find it. Another cubist gem, the Diamond House. And now we made it to the largest square in Prague, Charles Square, named after the great King Charles IV. This was originally a cattle market, nowadays it is a park, but the smell didn't change much since Middle Ages. Charles Square is a very strange place, especially at night, but it does have a unique atmosphere. Next one is probably my favorite place of the new town, Emmausi, a Slavonic monastery founded by Charles IV. But you can visit the monastery inside and enjoy the beautiful view over the city. And have coffee, again! And my second most favorite part of the new town is the botanical garden. I got locked up here a couple of times because I accidentally stayed over the closing hours. And more examples of cubism. You see, we are not making it up. Prague is really famous for cubism in architecture. We made it to the river again. I love this bridge for the views of the Prague castle.
And of course, we have to finish here, Naplovka, the most popular nightlife spot in Newtown, especially in summer. Thank you guys for watching. We hope you liked our today's video. If you are planning to see all the sights in this video in one day, make sure to wake up at 6 a.m. because it's gonna take you the whole day and probably even more. We will see you next week. Bye.